Agesifunde ingwati ye zenzo Zaba apostoli It is chapter 10 Verse 33 Before ifundwa bazalwani Again we are going to present one of our own. Pastor Felix Ngobe is a, a pastor in United Apostle Faith Church. There was a time when the demons didn't want him to come and minister here. Because he was set aside for only the United Apostle Faith Church in Zimbabwe, not UAFC. But because God, it's a God of unity. It's a God of reconciliation. It's a God of glory. Today we are listening to our own brother from the United Apostle Faith Church. Bazalan, let me give you the, the secret of listening to the word of God. We are going to be having an interpreter today so that we can catch up with our brothers and sisters who cannot understand other African languages. We want to accommodate everyone here this afternoon. In the morning, I brought you someone who, who is... Uh, vertically advanced. The one that I'm bringing here now, it's slightly challenged. Vertically. Gusho guti ngisho mile bazalwane agunjalo sisho mile laikaya. Hallelujah. <laughs> Let us read the book of um, Acts chapter 10, verse 33. 33. Nga se ngi tumela guwe, nga so lesos kati, wende ga se ufige. Manje se si kona sonke, pambi gugankulunkulu. Uguba sizwe gonke, oguyalelwe yinkos. Hallelujah. We are welcoming the servant of God on stage. Let us support him with a round of applause as he ascend the stage. Hallelujah. I was made to understand that Somebody will follow me as I speak. Oh, praise the Lord. <laughs> uh, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I want to take this opportunity. I want to take this opportunity. To greet our apostle. Our Mongameli. Mam Robela. Nibingele Lumongamelu Mam Robela. 
uh, the pastors that are here, uh, the elders, the deacons, uh, all the ladies here today, all the gentlemen, the youth, the children's church, and, and everybody that is busy in the work of the Lord. May the good Lord bless you. I would also want to recognize in our midst uh, the intercessors, those who make speaking in your midst possible. Without their prayers, we are nothing. Without their prayers, this place will not be like this. Let's give glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I am humbled that... Uh, the district minister says, I must say everything that is supposed to be said here. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh, second time I'm already. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, uh, I, I, I am humbled because uh, so many men of God have stood behind this pulpit. And they have ministered a word in season. To him that is weary. And we know that God is on point all the time. I want to go back to where uh, the district minister just read. I don't want to read the same verse, but I want to, 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 to recognize what Peter says as he begins. When Peter is asked to say something in the midst of these people that it called him, he says, Today I have learned a good lesson. The lesson that I have learned is that God is not a respecter of persons. I hope and understand that this is the, the understanding and this is the spirit that we have in our lives. That God is not a respecter of persons. But God is a respecter of his principles. Every man of God and every woman of God that does the principles of God. God rewards that with his presence. He does not care what titles I have. He does not care whether I am vertically challenged. He does not care whether I, 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 I have learned one or two things. But God is the respecter of his principles. If there is one thing to learn about God, is that God is the respecter of his principles. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, today, I want us to go to Exodus chapter 12. I want us to, 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 to talk about the blood. Because this is Easter, uh, we are bound to talk about the blood. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now, Exodus chapter 12. I have actually said that uh, as my as the title of this message is Basami City when I see the blood. Hallelujah Basama. Hallelujah. Uh, let's read from verse ten going down. Sifundek Sugagu verse ten.
verse 10. Ninga shi luto, guze gube se guseni. Gepa, oguse le gulo, guze gube se guseni. Niza gugushisa ngomlilo. Niagulitla ganje, izi nkalo zenu ziboshiwe, izi katulo zenu zise zinyawe ni zenu. Nezi ndondolo zenu zise sandle ni zenu, niagulitla. Ngogushesha, gui ipasiga liga chehova. Ngoguba ngia gutabula izwe la sekipite nga lobo busugu. Ngibula le onke ama zibulo ezwe ni la sekipite. Abantu nezinkomo ngenze iza shulelo guzo zonke izi tiko za sekipite nginguche hova. Ika zilea guba lupa uluenu ezindli ni lapo nikona. Na nga nibona ika zi ngia gulula gini. Ninge shelwa isifo, sogu ni pupisa, lapo ngibulala izwe la sekipite. Lolo sugu lia guba iskumbuzo gini, nilu trine lube ngumko siga chehova, anoli trina izi zugulwane ngezi zugulwane gogomteto wapagate. Izi ntugu ezi isikombisa, niagula isinkwa esinye na mfubelo. Yebo, ngo sugu lo kukala, no ikipa imfubelo ezindli nizenu, ngo guba bonke abadla ogu vucheleweyo, gusugela o sugu in lo kukala, guze gufige u sugu lo eskombisa, labo bantu, bayagu ngunywa wa Israel. Amen. Let us pray. Sovereign God. You set up a table before us in the presence of our enemies. As your word is ministered, oh dear Father, today, it is you who is speaking to our lives in the name of Jesus. To him that is sick, oh God, let them recover. To the one that needs exhortation, let them be exhorted. Yes. To the one that needs to be saved, let this be the day of salvation. Mm. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Amen. Where we just read, La esanda kufunda kona. Uh, I will do like uh, my pastor did in the morning. He went back to say before this happened. Now what we see here is the tenth plague. What we see here is the tenth plague. Plague number ten. Lana Sibona Uksasalaguga Israel Gweshum. What we see here is plague number ten. Oh, let me go ahead. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, what we see here is plague number 10. There are nine other plagues that happened before this one. Now, Israel was but here, they are, I, I, I'm not going to go back to all of them. But they are notable events that I am interested in. I want to read maybe uh, Exodus chapter 10 verse 8. Uh, the word of God says, Pharaoh said to Moses and Aaron, Go worship, but who is going? Go and worship your God. Go and worship your God. Hallelujah. Amen. And but who is going to go? Now the 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 journey of the children of Israel from Egypt to Canaan 
is exactly the same as the journey of the child of God. The journey that you are to- taking and walking now is the same journey is, is the same journey that is shown when the children of Israel were released from Pharaoh to go to their promised land. There is a home that you are going to. There is a home that you are going to. There is a place that is prepared for you. There is a place that God has prepared for you now. So here we see when the children of Israel are supposed to go. I am just saying that I'm interested in this because it's a notable fact. Now when, when, when Pharaoh uh, is saying to the children, of, I mean to, 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 to Moses, I have heard your cry that you want to go and worship God. But I want to understand who you want to take with you. That's what the demonic principalities did to your life. When you had made a decision that you want to serve God, they want to get hold of everybody that is besides you. That's what Pharaoh is asking. What is the need of children when you are going to the, to, to the house of God? What is the need of women when you are going to worship God? What is the need of animals and flocks and herds when you are going to worship God? That's the danger that we face day in, day out. We have seen a powerful mother who, who, who has a demonic daughter we have seen a powerful man of God who is a father to a drunkard we have seen a powerful man of God whose wife is a sangoma we have seen a powerful man of God whose children are wayward that's what Pharaoh is saying he's saying I can release you you can go wherever you want but what is there for me? I will remain with your children and turn them into drunkards and prostitutes. I will remain with your, with your wife and turn her into the greatest gossiper in town. I will remain with your friends and turn them into murderers and killers. I will remain with your family and turn them into anything I want to do. Who is going to worship with you? See, I'm told you, Amen. Hallelujah. I don't know what this means to you. I don't know whether you can identify you with that. Maybe when you look around, the person sitting next to you, can you recognize them? I am reminded of God when He calls and, and meets Cain. When he meets Cain, Cain, he says to Cain, Cain, where is your brother? Can you look around? Can can you touch the person next to you? Where is your brother? Amen. Amen. We were singing and jumping and enjoying and praising the Lord. But the question, the question is, where is your brother? We can run all over the shore and jump and be powerful and speak in other tongues and everything. But the question will still hang over our head. Where is your brother? Pharaoh says you can go. There is no need for daughters. There is no need for mothers. There is no need for brothers. Because it's you who want to go. Just go. Just go. I'm releasing you. Go. You can go and serve the Lord. But these ones are still mine. That is notable number one. 
Notable number two that I see there Oglandela is on verse 24. 24. Pharaoh says in chapter 10, verse 44, verse 24. 10, 24. He says you can go. You can go with your children, with your wives, with your friends, with your brothers, but leave your flocks and Leave your money and everything else with me. How many of you have, have succumbed to that demand of fear? How many of you have said, Fundisi, preach the word, stop talking about money? How many of you have said, now when he starts talking about money, he gets very angry? How many of you say, when he holds on to that topic, the whole day he is talking? This man is very passionate about man. That's what Pharaoh did to you. That's the damage that Pharaoh has done to you. He says you can go there and worship. Worshiping God has nothing to do with your flock. Worshiping God has nothing to do with your money. Worshiping God has nothing to do with your flocks and your heads. But because God is not looking for your money. He's looking for you. So go and leave your flocks. But Moses prays and cries for all of his people. I am looking at a woman who is crying for, his, for her children. I'm looking at a, at a man who is saying to Pharaoh, the Pharaoh of this world, he is saying, I'm not going to leave my children behind, but I am going to go to God again to release the next plan. My God is able to release the next plan. I'm going to cry for my family. I'm going to cry for my children. I'm going to cry for cry for my flock. I'm going to cry for everything that pertains to me. Because, my, because when I worship my God, I want to be every, I want to be all. Hallelujah. I'm reminded of a man of God called Job. The Bible tells, talks about Job and says Job. Each time his children were out, he would remain interceding. He would remain sacrificing. Because the question that was in his life was, what happens if they insult God in their pleasure? What happens if they speak things that are blasphemous to God? What, 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 what would happen if they say stuff that actually belittles my God? So he he remained uneasy in the presence of his God. He remained a man who was troubled. He remained somebody, a, a child of God, who was not there. Do you see, do you see, do you see one job next to you there? Do you see one job who is thinking about his children? Because he did not take all when he went to God. Because he did not bring everyone that he had. But Moses says, if I am to go, I'm taking everything and everything. I'm taking everything and everyone. That's a notable fact about the, ten, the nine plants. But today we are focusing on the tenth plan. This tenth plague is recorded in chapter 12, verse 13 and 14. And 14. And 14. And God says to Moses, Today you are going to put the blood on the doorpost. 
the blood is going to be on all the doorposts of the children of Israel. Even in your own doorpost, Moses is supposed to be there. Because that's what I started about today. I said God is a God that respects his principles. He does not respect the word, the name Aaron or Moses. But God respects his principles. And he says to Moses on every door, there shall be a mark of blood. And then he says, what I have said, I'm going to talk about. When I see the blood on the doorpost, I am on a destruction spree. I am on a destruction spree. I am on a chaotic spree. But when I see the blood in the doorpost, I will pass over you. I will not enter there. I will not kill the firstborn I will not destroy anybody there. You will be spared. You will be spared. But what, what we understand about that world, we understand that God had, 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 had made an arrangement with the children of Israel. But this, but on this occasion, I want you to understand that all the plagues, the children of Israel had nothing to do with them. But on this day, they had to do something. Passover night oh, was going to, to be, Passover night was going to be a day they would not forget. Passover night was going to be a night to remember. Passover night was going to be a night that was going to start greater things. Passover night was going to be a night of a new journey. Passover night was going to be a night of freedom and liberation. It was going to be a night where they were going to be liberated from the tough hand of fear. It was going to be a night where God was going to show himself God. It was going to be a night where God was going to demonstrate his power. Power. It was going to be a night where God would judge the courts of his of He says, I'm going to judge the courts of his church. And on this day, they were going to be embarrassed. I am told that along the, the plagues, the first plague there, when you see it, when Moses turned the, 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 the waters of the Nile into blood, this man gets worried. Pharaoh says, no, I'm worried about this. But then he goes to his magicians and they perform that and thing. And they perform that thing as well. And then he says, now if we can do it, then it's fine. I have my guys behind me who can do it as well. I have my backing. But on this night, they could not do anything. The house of Pharaoh was not safe. The houses of magicians were not safe. The, 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 the crawls of everybody were not safe. Except those that were under the blood. Except those that were under the blood. Oh, praise to the Lord. Oh, praise the Lord. There are three things that I want to mention about the blood of the Passover. Number one, it, it, was, it, was, a, it, it was a symbol of distinction. Oh, I like that interpretation. It was a symbol of distinction. It was a symbol of distinction. It was a symbol that separated a, a, a Hebrew from an, an Egyptian. The blood of Jesus separates mm. the ones that are going to hell from those that are going to heaven. The blood, the blood was a symbol of distinction. That 
and those that were remaining behind and those that would cross with God. It was a symbol of distinction from those that would see a cloud on the, during the day and a pillar of fire during the night. It was a distinction of some people that would cross the Red Sea on a dry land while others were swallowed. This blood was a blood of distinction. But he took somebody to put it on, to paint it on his windows, on his frame. Somebody was needed to stand up and paint the blood so that they were covered inside. It separated the children of darkness from the children of light. Oh, say amen. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah, Basalwa. Praise the Lord. I don't know whether you understand the power of this blood. The blood of the the blood of the Passover. The symbol of distinction. That separated Egyptian from Jew. That separated judgment from promotion. The blood, the blood of the Passover. Oh, let me not get excited. Let Praise me go to the number Lord. two. Number two, it was a pledge for mercy. Oh, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. It was a pledge for mercy. God says where we read. When I see the blood. I will pass over you. That's a pledge of mercy. The angel of death is not going to go into the house that is covered by the blood. Oh, how I cry that we may understand the power of this blood. It was a blood, a pledge from God. Last time I was here, I said to you, God always means what he says and says what he means. He does not go back on his word. Now God is pledging protection to this people. He's pledging mercy. And Paul would write years later, and he says without the shedding of blood there is no forgiveness I what am I saying oh, this to afternoon Jesus. what am I saying this afternoon Hallelujah. I, I, am saying saying that, I am saying that without the blood as recorded in Leviticus chapter 17 now the blood is the life of, of, of something or someone. But when the blood is shed, God is making a pledge. He's saying wherever there is the blood, I will identify with that. I am pledging mercy on every house that is blood. The blood there... I, I, it actually meant that the firstborn was going to survive. Mercy was on the Israelites. So what God was saying was that you are not going to be touched. You are going to be safe. Glory to Jesus. Oh, praise the Lord. The blood was a symbol of mercy. Number three. The blood was protection from judgment. <laughs> oh, praise the Lord. Glory to Jesus. I don't know whether you have read this and imagined what was happening outside. Inside the children of Israel's houses. There was peace. But outside there was chaos and death. The whole place was smelling death. Even the household of the king, the smallest to the biggest, there was death everywhere. But where there was the blood covering, nothing was going to happen. They were under the blood of the Passover there. When I see the blood, I will pass over you. When I see the blood, 
I will pass over you. But the Bible tells us again. The things that happened in the Old Testament are a shatter of things that are happening. What were they shattering there for? What were they shattering there for? Let us come to the blood that brings us here today. The blood of Jesus. Oh, I love that blood. Oh, hallelujah. Now, uh, I am reminded also when the writer of Hebrews says how much more how much more but because of time but I will only deal with three as well number one the blood of Jesus satisfies the justice of God it satisfies the justice of God. Hallelujah. I am reminded of Genesis chapter 2, I think it's verse 16. Genesis 2, verse 16. Adam and Eve had made, had made a mess of their lives. The Bible says they took up, the, they cut up the leaves. I think they were choosing the best leaves and trying to cover themselves. But each time they looked at themselves, the leaves were falling away. And they were naked again. And they ran to another tree. And they put up the leaves to cover themselves. And when the heat came, they all fell again away. And they said, no, this tree is not good enough. They went to another one and still the same thing happened. But Genesis, chapter, Genesis 2 verse 16 records that God actually slaughtered an animal and covered them and covered them with the skin of that animal. Signifying the power of this blood. And after they were covered like that, they did not need to follow tree after tree to try and get solutions to their problem. So the blood of Jesus satisfies the justice of God. Hebrews says how much more how much more does the blood of Jesus do? Maybe can I bring it in another way? And say that the blood of the Passover was speaking something. But the blood of Jesus speaks of better things. While the blood of the while the blood of the Passover what was supposed to cover them on that single day. The blood of Jesus covers us it covers us, us eternally. While the blood of the Passover was there for, for a few times, for a few times, the blood of Jesus covers you always number two the blood of Jesus makes me a victor hallelujah, hallelujah. Revelation chapter 12 verse 11 says Revelation 12 11 they defeated him with the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony. Which is the, what is the blood of the Lamb? Is, is the blood of Jesus. What am I saying to you, saints? I'm saying to you that the blood of Jesus makes you a victor. What am I saying to you today? 
Don't sit there like a defeated foe. Don't shout there like somebody who has not tested victory. Because the blood of Jesus makes you victorious. That's why Paul will sit down and run. Through all this we are more than conquerors. So whoever I'm talking to today, I'm talking to a people that are more than conquerors. The conqueror is the blood of Jesus. But the people that are sitting here are more than conquerors. They are operating at a level that is higher than a conqueror. Because they are eating the benefits of the conqueror. So the blood of Jesus makes you a conqueror. Touch your neighbor and tell him I'm a conqueror. I'm more than a conqueror. I'm a conqueror. Hallelujah. So the blood of Jesus makes us more than conquerors. Glory. Amen. Number three. The blood of Jesus reconciles us to God. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 24. I like this place. I don't have to read. Hebrews chapter 12 verse 24. 12 24. Nagu Jesu umlam leli we sivumelo anesisha. Nase kazini logu fafaza eli kuluma ogu kulu guna leli liga abeli. I call. Angazu utu ipete ili paibile kuluma lezi. It says this blood of Jesus speaks of greater things than the blood of Abel. The blood of Abel is recorded in Genesis 4. Verse 10. Verse 10. God says to Cain, the blood of your brother is crying to me. The blood of your brother is crying to me. Is crying for vengeance. Is crying for vengeance, revenge. So the blood of Abel speaks of revenge. And God goes on there in verse 10 and 11. And God says the blood of Abel is going to make the land that you were cursed. I, I don't know whether you are together there. So mm. the blood of Abel speaks curses. The blood of Abel speaks anger. The blood of Abel speaks bitterness. The blood of Abel speaks blocking. It blocks you from the presence of God. It blocks you from the presence of God. And the blood of Abel speaks guilt. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What are you doing going around carrying guilt? What are you going, going, what are you doing going around carrying bitterness? What are, you going, what are you doing going around with anger? What are you doing going around wanting to revenge and avenge yourself? When your God says vengeance is mine. But now the writer of Hebrews speaks a great mystery. He says, he says the blood of Jesus speaks of greater things than the blood of Abel. Because the blood of Jesus speaks 
to me. Instead of it blocking me to enter the Holy of Holies, it gives me access to the Holy, to the holy of Holies. So the blood of Jesus cleanses me from all unrighteousness. The blood of Jesus gives me power. It gives me power over all curses and spells. It cancels out everything that the devil has put before me. The blood of Jesus has power to defeat the enemy once and for all. That's why Revelation says they defeated him. Maybe if there is one thing that we have to learn this Easter is to go around defeating the the enemy with the blood of Jesus. Because the blood of Jesus speaks better things than the blood. The blood of Jesus gives us access to God. The blood of Jesus speaks on our behalf in the presence of God. The blood of Jesus speaks forgiveness of our sins. So in other words, we cannot go around with guilt. We cannot go around with bitterness. We cannot go around with bitterness. And defeated for us, we can't go around weak. As the blood of Jesus gives us the power. When I see the blood, when I see the blood, when I see the blood. He says to all of us, how much more does the blood of Jesus? He says to us that his blood reconciles us. It makes us the children of God. And John will sit down and write in verse 12. 
Now all those who received them. He gave them the power to become the sons of God. Where do they get the power? They get the power from the blood. The power of the blood of Jesus. When you are a child of God, you are not an ordinary person. You are extraordinary. You are not an ordinary human being. You are an extraordinary being. And Paul will write to the church and say, We do not walk by signs, but we walk by faith. What he means in simple English, it means we do not walk by the way we see. But we walk by the way we believe. Maybe this Easter you have to change your, 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 your way of doing it. And stop confessing the things you see. And start speaking the things that you believe. And start speaking, speaking of the things that you believe. Hallelujah. Somebody. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah, somebody. Praise the Lord. I believe there are people sitting here today who struggle with the anger of heaven. They, I believe there are people that, that are here today that are struggling because they want vengeance. The blood of Jesus speaks of better things than the blood the blood of, of Abel. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And Paul will write and say there is no more condemnation. There is no more condemnation. The world may condemn you. You can condemn yourself. Your family can condemn you. But when you are under the blood, God says there is no more condemnation. Without wasting the time that I was given, that I was given. Maybe you are sitting here and you are saying, Pastor, I have not received him as my Lord and personal Savior. I want to do it today on this big occasion. I want to make it a big thing to come to Jesus. I want to be covered by the blood. I don't want to perish with the Egyptians. I want to, I want to come to Jesus. I want you to raise your hand and say, I'm here, Pastor. I want to receive this. I want to get under the covering. I'm not talking about going to church. I'm not talking about being a friend of a pastor. But I'm talking about knowing Jesus. I'm talking about coming to Jesus, knowing him personally. And knowing that when God comes today and takes his people home, you are not going to be left stranded. You are not going to be left shocked. But you are going to join them. If you are here today and you say, I'm here, Pastor, I want that. I want this Jesus. I want this man with better promises. I want this man who takes away, who takes away all sin. I want to be his child. I don't want to be with anybody else. I want to see, I want to be with Jesus. I want to be under the covering of the blood of Jesus. The blood that will never lose its power. The blood that will never lose its authority. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. I, my I seem God. to find a place where there, we are all Christians here. Maybe we want to pray with the next group of people. You are struggling with anger and bitterness and pain. Uh, we want to pray with you today. When the director of 
of this service spoke, she said, the aim is that you don't walk out of this place the way you came in. Allow God to deal with you. Allow God to deliver and free you. He is a God of a second chance. Because the promises of this blood are for everybody. If you are there, you just have to stand on your feet. Just stand on your feet. As we close and we pray. Oh Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you that you are not a man or the son of man to lie or to repent. Thank you because you are the God of this season. Thank you because you are here today. As you promised, O oh God, that where two or three are gathered in your name, you shall be in their midst. As the church cries out in prayer, my Father, we are reminded of part of our families, oh God, that Pharaoh took captive of. And like Moses, we say we can't go on. We can't go on like this. We can only go when, when everybody is here. Now I want you to raise your voice and speak to God. Think of anybody that, that you need God to serve members of your family, of your children, just pray for them today and ask that God may extend his mercies. The Bible says his mercies are new every morning. And Paul will say his grace is sufficient. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Father God. As we remember, we remember, we remember, oh God. As we remember our oh God, like your word will say, that some trust in horses, others trust in chariots, oh God. But we will remember. We will remember, oh God. We will remember the name of the Lord. Thank you, King of Kings.